Okay, so now we are moving over to interviews. So interviews, you will, um, you will be given the interview after you've done the admission test. Um, interviews are not to catch you out as a candidate. They are there just for the academics to know who you are as a person and if you are true to yourself, as Savannah mentioned before. The main takeaway from interviews, I would say, is they're just there to test your thinking and whether you, whether you are a suitable candidate for that uh, for that university. They want to see how you think and they want to see if they can actually teach you. That's the, mo that's the most important thing. If you show that you are a student who is interested and you're able to talk through certain um, situations and answer the questions, you will be able to like provide the best example to these academics to, show, to illustrate to them that you are a, you are the best candidate for them to teach. So um, the questions that you might be given are designed to assess the ability to deconstruct, assimilate and apply wider reading. So in humanities in general, you will have a lot of reading to do. So make sure you show that interest in reading. If you end up saying, oh, but I hate reading books, they will not want to consider teaching you because what's the point of doing a humanities degree if you hate reading? Um, they might test your problem solving abilities, your ability to acknowledge counter arguments. This is really important because you have to show the academic that you're not someone who's just so um, focused on your opinion, your, your views, that you will be able to take the views of others and um, you understand their views. And finally, um, flexibility and analytical reading. Um, analytical reasoning. So these are what the questions are designed to assess. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so what kind of interviews are there? There are two types of interviews. One, you will have a subject specific. So one's a subject specific interview. These are literally why you have chosen your course. So this is why, like Abdullah mentioned, you need to know your personal statement inside out. Because if you are original in your personal statement, this will make this interview so much more easier because you have that natural passion that will come through whilst you're talking. Um, and then you will have a general interview. This may be to expand on personal statements. So they might say, oh, you did X and Y work experience, maybe at a law firm or maybe in a care home or something. And they'll ask you um, a specific question about that. They'll ask you why you're interested in your subject. And they will ask you maybe to discuss why the interest in that subject. So for example, why have you chosen a history degree? Is this to do with um, what you're interested in in the future? Why have you chosen an economics degree? Um, so it's just really, they're just there to know, um, really find out who you are as a person. Um, so this slide is to introduce you to a, ty a type of academic based question that could appear in an interview to test your ability to then deal with this unfamiliar, unseen type of material. Um, the exercises that they put to you are to test your ability to now gather this material and interpret small extracts at a very, very basic level and to now discuss any like questions that they give you. Now, I'm aware that this extract that I've put is um, a law one, but I chose this because absolutely no legal knowledge is required to answer these questions. And actually, applicants tend to do a lot better when they refrain from relying on bits and pieces of technical legal knowledge they have and use their mind and use like, it's sort of like English GCSE where you've got an unseen material, even A-level, and you just get thrown in and you decide, okay, I'm not going to use things that I think I know, but I'm going to sit there and try to figure it out myself. So the skills here are, should be universal to every degree and every interview that you face irrespective of the degree you choose and um, if you're faced with this type of extract I would say that to approach it number one you could be given a pre-reading exercise like this in your interview and let's say like this example it's an article um, firstly they won't give you it without a purpose which means in your allocated time that you have try your best to figure out what is the purpose of this task and what is this article the statute literature whatever it is what is it trying to say to you and the second part is, for the above, maybe approach the statute using a checklist or use a mind map or use something that helps break it down for you. Uh, my thought process when given something like this would be 
uh, sort of make a checklist of what actually constitutes genocide. And I know they're going to tell me, okay, they're not going to give me the free uh, material without needing to apply it to a situation. So I'm going to make a checklist. And as they tell me this example here, like the agrarian society and whether this constitutes genocide, I'm going to continue ticking off the list and to see if this is genocide or not. So this is an example of a technique you could use. And when you go into the room and they now ask you questions, are you reading? There is no issue in saying that you do not understand what that certain statute specific word meant. But what you want to show is that you were resilient and you could find ways around your difficulties. Now, I'll give you an example, which is what happened in my interview is I got a statute on wrongful trading. And obviously not every single 17 year old knows what insolvent liquidation means. And I still don't. But what matters is you can say to them, well, I attempted to make sense of what insolvent liquidation is and I concluded why and this is my conclusion and perhaps think of it as like okay insolvent liquidation might not mean this but if it did mean something else which is I say meaning b I came to this different conclusion which is different to the first meaning that I thought it had it doesn't matter what you, conclusion you reach the point is eventually they will correct you they will try to lead you down the right direction sorry um, when you get there take the hint and rethink your answers and be prepared to like be guided by them so don't obviously just think whatever I've spent 10 minutes thinking about is the only answer possible let them guide you number two this is obviously not the only type of interview question you can get you can get a broader question and um, these can ask you very open-ended policy-based questions um, and the thing I would say is do not rush your answer do not think that as soon as they ask you something, you need to say yes or you need to say no. And the point is, is because they will com they'll be completely confused. They'll ask you, how on earth did you get that answer about a huge question like, I don't know, the right to, whether the right to freedom of expression should be greater than the right to privacy or something. They're going to ask you, how did you get that conclusion in the space of a minute? You want to actually sit there and put thought into the conclusion that you've now come to. So think out loud, absolutely everything. They want to hear what you're thinking, what decisions you're making in your head. Um, it's sort of like writing an essay, but doing it verbally. So play, sort of plan that answer out, out loud instead of doing it in your head. And when doing so, introduce, introduce different sides to the argument, um, especially the side that you've not even considered yet, and that's contrary to what you believe in. Rationally work through the question and sort of break down the opponent, opponent arguments, dismiss them as you go through them, and then reach a conclusion. Do not, um, again, don't dismiss the other argument. And also, I guess what happens if you reach a dead end? You should be able to explain that, you know what, you've reached a conclusion that you didn't think you were going to, but even though your original stance is not the strongest right now, you're able to show and maybe admit that you're not correct, and be confident with that, be confident in backtracking and coming to an alternative conclusion. And if this is the case, it's still so important for you to explain why. What made you think that argument B is stronger than argument A? Second piece of advice is use your knowledge. If it is an open-ended question, chances are you can use prior knowledge where it is relevant. So if the current topic that they've brought up reminds you of something you've been studying, for example, um, my question on like the right to privacy reminded me of the Snoopers Charter and how this was used to, um, again, infringe upon rights to personal privacy. And then I was able to then cross-reference and make that connection as to whether this was justified or not. So you can use your own knowledge, but just don't rely on it so much. Um, and very, very important, if there is an awkward silence and they are staring at you, they're just trying to observe what you'll do in a difficult situation. So take it on the chin. Um, and just continue thinking. Here are some interview do's and don'ts. Um, just to briefly touch on them. The first one is listen. Listen to the questions very carefully. Know what they're asking you and not what you think they've asked you. Take hints that they might be throwing your way if you're not on the right track. Um, and then you'll obviously get to where you need to be. With two, breathe. Do not force yourself to know everything. Ask questions for clarification if need be. Take your time, take it slow, obviously not extremely, but do take it slow. Um, and it's better that you reach a well thought through answer than something that you've rushed. 
And also if you're nervous, which of course you will be, um, this will go once you've actually started to delve into the question and you now are focusing on the bulk of the interview, which is the most important part. With three, again, like I said previously, think out loud. They need to hear your thought processes. So even if what you're saying out loud sounds sort of stupid to you, it's important they can hear how you reason with your thoughts and how you now argue with your thoughts and opinions and reach a conclusion. The worst thing, like I said previously, is that you can do in an interview is to give an answer without explaining yourself. For be prepared to be thrown off. So you will have questions put your way that you weren't actually expecting, and that's completely fine. The purpose of these throw-offs is to actually keep you going and see how you work with the new views or questions they've made you think about. And even if you are thrown off, which you could be, take it on the chin, take a second if you need to, um, just think and literally just say to them, can I have a second please? And they're completely fine with that. Regather your thoughts, rethink your opinions and keep thinking out loud. Don't cave, they will guide you if you're going off point. With number five, apply your existing knowledge, like I said. So demonstrate your ability to make connections with current knowledge and new ideas as well. Um, use examples as you like make points to elaborate them, but of course within reason, be flexible in your approach and use the material they're giving you too, as well as your external knowledge. Um, with number six, always be willing to ask questions. And I put in brackets throughout and after because as a student, whilst you're going through the interview, they want you to be able to understand what's going on because you won't be able to give a proper answer without having clarification for any misunderstandings or misconceptions you have. So when you're unsure, ask. For example, one of my questions was on intellectual property law and whether something would be copyright. And I didn't understand whether, like how much would, be, would constitute copyright when you're quoting another text. So I asked. At the end of the day, it's easier for you to engage with them when you know what they're talking about. So, and also when I said at the end, ask questions. Uh, this is something you can do and something I did as well. So if they say, have you got any questions at the end, ask. Yeah, they're asking you to engage with them. This is your opportunity to engage with them outside of the questions they've been asking you. So for example, I asked whether any other Newnham College students tend to do dissertations. And if so, what kind of topics can you actually talk about? Um, it shows here your interest in the actual subject you're studying and you're not just doing it because it sounds nice. Number seven, be yourself. Don't pretend to be something you're not when speaking. Don't try to say what you think they want you to hear. So if you disagree with something they're saying, voice it, say it. They actually want to know you and whether you can actually be a student that they can teach. And with the don'ts, do not um, rush. Take your time. Drink water if you have to. Ask for a minute if you have to. If you need to think, the answer will be much better when you've put in a lot more thought into it. A rushed answer will have holes in it and they will tear it apart so if even if you do have a thought through answer it's not to say that they won't pick out some holes but actually now you can justify what made you get there and you can work with the admissions tutor with two do not forget about alternative arguments do justice to the argument against you acknowledge them give them their weight and then demonstrate why you're right they want to see you can actually address everything around you um, number three don't be afraid it's easier said than done, but it's nerve wracking because obviously you've got about two to four people staring at you think, but focus on your thoughts and the interview itself rather than the people making notes. Three, before you enter, maybe recite a few words to keep yourself cool. Um, but the point is keep calm and collected so you can actually think. With number four, don't overthink. Once you're done, there is going to be time between num interview number one and number two. Forget about the previous one and just keep it moving.